All right, welcome back to the PyCSE channel. Uh, today I want to continue a theme that I started in the last video on Python of looking at helpful third-party packages. And yesterday or the day before we talked about uncertainties and uncertainty quantification. And today I wanna to talk about units and uh, why they're important. And so the, the cartoon here kind of illustrates why they're important. There was a famous, uh, famous case where the two teams were designing a rocket that was going to Mars, and one team used uh, the English system of units, so things like uh, force in pounds, and the other team used metric where the force was in newtons, and they only had the numbers to look at, and so when they finally sent the rocket off, their units were not consistent, and so the, the rocket ended up crashing on Mars. So we'll like take a look today at, at how we can try to avoid issues like that by incorporating units into our calculations. So I will focus on the pint package that you can find at this URL. And it, um, it is a package for making units easy. And uh, obviously the person likes beer, this unit is a pint of beer. And so we'll take a look at a couple of examples. The, the story I told about the uh, Mars lander is, uh, or Mars climate orbiter is here. And the issue again is just that one group used English units and one group used metric units. And so there was a factor of about 4.45 that was not correct uh, due to this conversion factor. Okay, so how do we use Pint? Um, you probably have to install it. And so if you're in a Jupyter Notebook or in your shell, you would just do pip install pint and, uh, and carry on um, with it. I've already installed it, so let's look at how we might use it. Um, okay, so the first thing we have to do is um, import uh, pint. And that will bring it into our namespace, and then we can import a registry of units. And so I will normally do something like this, import pint, and then say u is equal to pint.unit registry. And this is where you, um, if you dig deep into the documentation, there's a set of defaults that are normally SI units uh, that we'll focus on but you can do some uh, pretty sophisticated things to set this to be English units or, or something like that. And that's the first, uh, first thing that, that we're going to do. And then let's get clean this back up. Then we are free to start making some units. So the typical way you'll define um, a unit is to multiply a number by, by a unit. So let's look at a few of the length units first. Um, we can say u.km, that would be a kilometer. And we can also write it out in longhand, u.kilometer. Um, we can say u.meter and u.millimeter. So all of these are understood by the pint package as units of length. And here you can see the kilometer. These are synonyms for each other, the meter, the millimeter. In general, we could put prefixes in there, we could make this a centimeter and so forth. And we can uh, immediately already do algebra with them. So if I say um, a u dot meter plus one dot, uh, a u dot centimeter, then it will do the right thing. Uh, oh, I see, we have to do, make these numbers. One times a meter plus one times a centimeter. Um, should give us then 1.01 meters. So it's automatically done the unit conversion on centimeter so that it puts the right thing in here. Uh, or we could do 10, 10 millimeters and we would have the same thing. Okay, so that's uh, how we can do uh, regular algebra. We can um, have other units besides this. So let's suppose we want a time unit. Let's put uh, 10 hours here. Now this calculation doesn't make any sense and it gives us an error of dimensionality error um, here because you cannot add meters and hours. That doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. But you can uh, divide them. And so here we will see when you run this, you get 0 0.1 hours per, um, 0 0.1 hour meters. Oh, let's, um, Let's group these so that we get the units correct. 
and now we have meters per hour. So we have to group this so that it's not one meter divided by 10 times an hour. It is actually a meter divided by uh, 10 hours. And that gives us this velocity of meter per hour. Um, there are all kinds of other, other units. We have u dot liter, u dot cubic centimeter. That's equivalent to u dot centimeter cubed. Right, these are all different ways of writing the same thing, cubic centimeter, centimeter cubed. And you can do all the um, kinds of algebra with those that you want. And then there are many composite units like pressure. So we could have u dot pascals, um, u dot bars, u dot atmospheres, etc. And these are all composite uh, SI units that are comprised of, of those other ones. All right, so now uh, this is the, like the foundation of how to do it. Suppose um, we want to calculate um, a concentration. So let's say we have M is 2.3 uh, times U dot millimoles. So we have 2.3 millimoles and suppose the volume was, um, let's say uh, 10 cubic centimeters then we can just calculate m divided by v and we will get the units uh, that we want. So here we have 0 0.22999 millimoles per cubic centimeter. And that's not super, maybe those aren't the units that you want. Um, we can convert those. <clears throat> if we want this in moles per liter, for example, then we just write 2 u dot moles divided by u dot liter. And that will convert it into 0.23 moles per liter. So we can always use the, uh, the dot two uh, function here. This starts to become really convenient when you get more and more of these variables. So let's look at, um, let's say the ideal gas. So I'm just gonna copy some things here. Let's say we have um, the ideal gas constant here with joules per mole per Kelvin. We have a temperature at 273.15 Kelvin and a pressure, standard pressure at one atmosphere. And we want to know what is the molar volume. So the molar volume here from the ideal gas law is just R times T divided by P. And we can um, decline that uh, call. I probably should have put no disturb on. So we have V equals RT over P and we can uh, also use formatting here. So let's say print, let's make an F string. The molar volume is V and we want this to be in uh, liters per mole. So let's say U dot liters divided by U dot mole. That makes it a molar volume. And let's format this to 1.3 F. So three decimal places. And now we can run this and we get the molar volume is 22.414 liters per mole um, as, as you might recall from uh, physical chemistry. All right, temperature is generally kind of tricky because most of these, like if you want to see atmospheres to bar or atmospheres to pascals, you just multiply by a scaling factor and you're done. That makes it pretty straightforward. But temperature is not like that. And to convert temperature, say from Celsius to Kelvin, you have to add an offset and multiply. And that changes a whole lot of things and makes many questions about temperature uh, ambiguous. So temperature in any unit system I've ever seen is always more complicated than you want. Let's have a look at, at just what, like what kind of complication this could be. Let's say that T1 is zero times U dot degree C. And we have, um, oh, this is already not, uh, not being happy. What is the, the problem here? Oh, so it's already uh, an ambiguous operation with the offset unit. So we can't even define a, a regular variable as zero degree C. What we have to do instead is use a special way of formulating it that is U dot quantity. This is a, a constructor in the uncertainties package, zero, u dot degree c. And then this should print zero degree Celsius. And if you want to use this in any kind of um, 
any other kind of calculation, it is best to immediately convert this to uh, u.kelvin. And this will give us an absolute temperature of 273.15 Kelvin, and then we can use this um, like we did uh, up here. So for example, this if we were to try this, this calculation again, this one worked fine. But if I would just take uh, the u dot quantity in degree C and put it here, these should be equivalent, but it gives us an error. And the error is because Celsius is not an absolute temperature scale. And so the best thing you can do is just immediately convert it to absolute temperature. And temperature is the, really the only one you have to worry about um, here. So if you have degrees C or degrees Fahrenheit, then you have to construct it this way. All right, let's see what other things could we um, talk about. We've talked about how it doesn't let you add incompatible units. It will combine units, so you're free to multiply and divide units. Um, let's talk about dimensionless, uh, dimensionless numbers because we use those a lot. And we can leverage this uh, to figure out the same, same kind of thing. So let me, let me copy this over here again. And we have uh, from the pressure, the gas constant, the temperature, this is the molar volume, we can calculate the compressibility, which is defined as P times V and we divide that by R times T. And this is the compressibility and it should be dimensionless. Um, and in this case, because it's an ideal gas law, it should also be one. So let's have a look, what do we get? We kind of get some funny units and something that's actually not quite one. So it's not quite one in these strange units of liter times standard atmosphere times, uh, times joule. So this is not incorrect, um, it's just not what you want. So if we take Z and, and force it to reduced units, this is a, a method that uh, allows you to simplify these as much as possible, then what we get is something that's very close to one and that it's dimensionless. So this, this product up here is dimensionless, um, but in, in the way it's written, uh, it is not, and that's why we see the, the units here, uh, A, the units here, and this magnitude not being one. So in this, whatever this conglomerate is, uh, this is correct, but by the time you um, do all of the manipulations to get it to be dimensionless, we get down to here. All right, and the last thing that we'll look at here is uh, a couple of other ways you can test if something is dimensionless. So if we look at the units on Z, then we, got, we get these strange liter standard atmosphere slash joule. So this does not change the units, it just displays what it is in those. And we can um, add, ask though if it is dimensionless. So there is an attribute on the units that will tell you if it's dimensionless or not. And so here you see even though it listed these strange units, they are in fact dimensionless. Um, all right, <clears throat> so we use these all the time just for um, maybe for one, one more example here, we'll talk about the, the Reynolds number. <coughs> the Reynolds number is a collection of units. And so if we have the density, the velocity, the characteristic length, and the dynamic viscosity defined here with all of the units on them, this uh, Reynolds number is a known dimensionless quantity. And when we calculate it, we should be able to see that it is. And there's two things to note here. One is that when we first look at, uh, at this, this is kind of confusing. So let's look at it uh, first here. Again, you see two times uh, centimeter, kilogram, meter squared, uh, like this. But in fact, if we ask, are the units dimensionless? Then you see that the answer is, is true. And so to get, to get the real dimensionless number, we have to add, look at the um, RE.2 reduced units. And there you see that we get a value of 0.02. So this is the magnitude of the Reynolds number that you would want to use in a calculation, probably not this one. Um, 
if you're only using the numbers. This number is correct with these units on it, um, but it's not correct if you take the units off. All right, so that is probably the most important, um, one of the more important things to remember. Um, there are a couple of caveats whenever you're, you're handling units that you should be extra careful in. One is the temperature, and whether you're using an absolute temperature or a relative temperature. Uh, a, th a second point is when you're using third-party packages, so so far I've only talked about algebra, regular algebra in this, and it works great for regular algebra, but if you were to say, uh, look at what is uh, a function of those, then it, it doesn't always work. So let's see, um, let's just see what happens. NP, let's do np.exp of five times u dot meters. I would expect this gives me an error because the exp function expects a dimensionless argument and this has units so uh, so it's not okay. Um, but if we put in re here, then we get a, a number that is you know 1.02, which is uh, the same as probably the same as np.exp of 0 0.02. It's close to zero and it tells you that it's dimensionless. So, so you cannot always take um, all functions of all, uh, all units. They may not be defined and the function may not know what to do with it. Something like fsolve or solve IVP will go through some Fortran program and it may or may not know what to do with the units and it may or may not use the right values and it may or may not return the, the units for you. So you have to be really careful um, using units when you're doing calculations. In those cases, it is always best if you make dimensionless equations where you don't have to worry about uh, the units anymore. You just have to make sure you get the right numbers in in the first place. All right, so that's it. <clears throat> that is uh, one, one of the packages that, that is around. There is another one called uncertainties, uh, not uncertainties, quantities. And it, it is also pretty good, but it doesn't handle temperature quite as well as pint. And so I decided I would just talk about pint uh, because we use temperature in chemical engineering. And so a package that doesn't do temperature is not that practical for us. Um, and there is a nice integration of pint and uncertainties. That's why it's on my mind, where you can incorporate units and uncertainties. But I will use uh, talk about that maybe another day. All right, if this is helpful, uh, please like the, the video and subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends and we'll see you next time.